Hey guys, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. We're looking at a 1996 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 4. This one here, the RS grade, the very rare RS grade, which is a version of the car that was meant for racing teams or somebody who wanted something a little bit special. They are in limited supply and it's hard to get a good one and this is a good one. Okay, so it has 215,000 kilometers, but don't let that fool you. The me uh, mechanical condition of the car and the looks of the car are fantastic. Interior is also good. This here is a 4G63, and while the RS has the same engine and turbo as the GSR, there are a lot of other differences, and I'll get into those in a second. For now, let's switch the engine off, now that you can see that it runs well. This video is going to be a post-purchase inspection video for a customer that bought this car from the USA. And we're going to go ahead and ship it to them as soon as we're done here. Okay, so the engine puts out 280 horsepower, but that kind of goes in quotation marks because Mitsubishi just said it was 280. It's probably somewhere closer to 300, 310, somewhere around there. The Evo 4 is the first of the three generations, four, five, six, that are on this chassis. And so compared to the one, two, and three, the engine is rotated 180 degrees. So your transmission, transmission comes out this side instead of this side, and the exhaust comes out the front instead of the back. The timing belt was changed in 2018 at 212, 324. And so in the last four to five years, it's only driven 3000 kilometers. Okay, it has a set of aftermarket suspension on it, upper mounts, HKS, and that's the stock strut tower brace that not only uh, connects your two strut towers, but also to the firewall. Okay, radiator is stock. Actually, everything else in here is stock as well. Okay, oil and coolant both look okay. You probably want to change your brake and your clutch fluid because they seemed a little bit squishy. Close the alloy hood. Okay, and a quick look at the car. And we'll talk about what the RS is in just a second, but first we're gonna go over the auction inspection sheet here. So this is all the information given to us from the auction to decide if we wanted to purchase the car. So a 1996 Lancer RS Evolution 4, of course it's four wheel drive, auction grade 3.5, interior C, exterior C. They're being hard on this. This is more like a B and B, I would say. 216, 613 kilometers. Let's not get run over by the Thor. <laughs> oh no, I got run over by the Thor. Yeah, 4G63 turbo engine. This is an RS grade. These are the sales points. Various aftermarket parts. There's not a lot. There's suspension, a shift knob, a steering wheel. It still is on the a stock exhaust, which is a little bit weird. Um, report section, windshield rock chip. Interior dirty and wear. Seat saggy. Oh, yeah, aftermarket seats in this. Headliner is dirty. It's really not that dirty. Interior has animal hair. I really couldn't find it. Um, trunk interior liners have been removed. That actually might be part of the RS. Underside surface rust, which let me just show you here. Rust on the Evos is a big problem. This one has a little bit of rust at the bottom here, but it is all solid and good. You can see no signs of corrosion even up in here. This is, if you've seen these Evo 4s or even 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all of them are more rusty than this one is. And so that's a big win. You would think with 200 something thousand kilometers, you'd be fighting rust till the day the car dies, but that's not the case here. And I'm very happy to see it. So very scratches, dents, scuffs, overspray marks. That's kanji I couldn't read, so I had to write it here. And uh, wheels scratched. And the wheels are pretty scratched, but they aren't the O... I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that they are the OEM wheels, but it's hard for me to understand that. They are a rally-inspired wheel. I think that they're made... They say WRC Tarmac Evo by NK. And so NK makes a lightweight wheel usually. That's kind of their thing. Okay, let's do a once around. And just want to mention the front fog lights like that on the RS are optional. Either you can get the covers or the fog lights. Okay, so let's take you for a tour around it. Visually, the RS, aside from the sticker on the back, looks the same as the GSR. Unless you look at a few of the details, like those fog light covers, 
the brakes have been downgraded from the GSR. And actually the RS, when it was from factory, was less expensive than the GSR. They do the same thing with the Subaru RA version of the Impreza. And even the new 8.6 had race car versions of it you can get for cheaper. But nowadays, you probably pay about 50 to 100% more for an RS compared to a GSR because of the rarity and the fact that they're quite a bit faster. Although it's the same engine and turbo, you do have 85 kilograms less weight than the regular version, which the regular is 1345, and this one is, no, 1325 kilograms. And then this one is uh, 1280. I don't know, I just remembered the 85 <laughs> kilograms, but it's somewhere around there. And that's a big difference on a compact car like this. 85 kilograms will be noticeable. It also has a uh, shorter ratio transmission, which was optional. So we don't know if it is on this one, but I think most... can't speak today. I'm very lithby. I think most people who got the RS did option it for the shorter ratio transmission, because that's kind of part of the fun of it. You also got extra chassis braces on it. One of the extra chassis braces is, you can't see it, but behind the grill here. Okay, this is stock on all of the Evos. It's a hood vent, and then you get an intake for your, uh, for your air intake there. What else is different? You didn't get the AYC. Instead, you got limited slip differentials, which is a heaven sent for this car, because the AYC can be problematic at um, once it gets older. Uh, by the way, AYC is uh, Active Yaw Control. That's what the AYC stands for. And what it does is that only in the rear of the Evo 4, I believe, it will send torque based on your throttle and a G-force sensor, and it will send your torque to different wheels at the back. It was a rudimentary torque vectoring system. I think, I think the first one on a production car was on this and the Legnum. So, cool but it can be problematic if it breaks and it requires quite a bit of maintenance and limited, sif limited slip differentials work better anyway, like this one has. Okay, this is the Evo 4 wing. It is, I guess, the smallest of the 456. It's kind of a dual stage wing. It has the wing plus the spoiler on it and then a post in the middle so that when you're looking through your rear view mirror, you're reminded how big your wing is. That's a stock exhaust. Sounds pretty nice for a stock exhaust, I would say. The body of this one is excellent. Let's go back to the auction inspection sheet. I'm just going to show you. We have just A1, 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 U1. These are all very minor areas of damage. There's an A2, apparently underneath the side skirt there, but I took a look and I couldn't really find anything wrong with it. No medium scratches that I could find. Mirrors and handles are black on the RS, and yeah, you usually get Brembo brakes with the regular version. You don't get those with the RS. You usually get Recaro seats with the regular version, and you don't get those with the RS. But you do get to go faster, and you get to, you know, you go to an Evo meeting, and you get to be one of the ones with the RS. With this little sticker on the back. Also, interior liners were lighter on it. There are a lot of things. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to miss something. Okay, to the interior, here's one of the differences. You get crank-style windows. Instead of uh, electric windows, that helps you keep the weight down. This one has AC, which was optional, but the AC doesn't work, unfortunately. Okay, here's a look at the aftermarket seats, and a lot of people put aftermarket seats in these because the OEM seats are really embarrassingly bad. They're like uh, the non-Evo versions of the seats. And then these are from Recaro, but the stitching has gone a little bit worn in both the driver and the passenger seat, but they're otherwise in fine condition. They are a 1990s Recaro seat. I don't find them particularly good or bad. I think the GSR seats are better than these, but they do tend to wear out pretty quickly as well. Okay, OMP aftermarket steering wheel. It is an offset one so that it's a little bit closer to the driver than normal. You get white face gauges, which are nice, very easy to read, even at nighttime. Okay, and I think this is a factory boost gauge. It kind of has the look of a factory unit. 
You can see some deterioration of the rubber there. Okay, pretty simple inside here, nothing really that special. You can see this uh, doesn't have climate control AC and doesn't have the fancy screen of the regular GSR version. Aftermarket CD player has been installed. And uh, I believe it's been smoked in, but not recently. Yeah. Aftermarket shift knob here. It is a little bit hard to get into gears. That's why I said you probably want to change your clutch fluid. And you might have to change the clutch if it's worn down. Because sometimes that's the, that's the way a clutch will wear out. If the friction material gets so low that you can no longer get into gears easily. Okay, it's missing floor mats, unfortunately, front and rear. But I think the floor mats are nothing special. Looks like they ripped that in order to fit it with the dead pedal there. And I think those are aftermarket pedal covers. Okay, it is a four-door, so easy to carry your people around. Kind of weird that both Subaru and Mitsubishi wanted to make rally cars out of their four-door cars. I wonder if they talked about it first, like Mitsubishi was like, hey, Subaru, let's both make really awesome cars. And then everyone else is going to be sad that they don't have cool four wheel drive cars. And Toyota's like, we can make a Celica work. And they're like, mm, not a four door. When people think about the rally cars of the 90s, they think about just this one and the Impreza. Now, this looks like a rear strut tower brace that is aftermarket. I know that it comes with a factory rear one in the RS only. But I don't think this is it. This one looks too much like an aftermarket one. You get a thinner liner here. Inside here doesn't have any rust like at least 70% of the Evo 4s have had, which is nice. And they said that the liners have been removed, but maybe that's just how this one is, the RS. That's how you get the lighter weight. Okay. Um, even though this is a lighter weight, it is still heavier than the Subaru Impreza. WRX, either the RA or the regular version, which is 1220 to 1250 kilos. Okay, pretty good looking car. The RS is a special car indeed, and it's really nice to be able to shoot something like that. We're not going to be run over by the Lexus, so let's hide. That's going to be the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and have a nice day.